Hey Vs, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are taking a look at five very common cosmetic powders. I'm hoping this will be the first of a series of videos looking at different cosmetic powders and ingredients to help you sort of get to know them and get to know why we use different ingredients and different powders for different things in cosmetics. So today we're going to be looking at five really basic ones. We'll be looking at titanium dioxide, zinc oxide, cerisite mica, white kaolin clay, and starch. So we'll be using cornstarch today, but it's a pretty good stand-in for arrowroot starch or wheat starch as well. They're pretty much interchangeable for our purposes. The five powders we're looking at today roughly fall into two categories. We have the opacifiers, so that is our titanium dioxide and our zinc oxide, and our sort of filler powders, so that's the other three, the kaolin clay, the cerisite mica, and the starch. One of the questions I get asked a lot about making cosmetics is about using zinc oxide instead of titanium dioxide. And so this video will give you a really good idea as to why that just really doesn't work. But so why do people want to make this substitution? It's because you've read that titanium dioxide is a carcinogen. And yes, there is a study that shows that, but if you look at it more closely, the study was basically you had a bunch of rats in a enclosed area, basically living in a 24-7 cloud of aerosolized titanium dioxide. We simply don't use titanium dioxide in that way when we were making cosmetics. It's like bacon is a carcinogen, grilled meat is a carcinogen, but most people still feel pretty comfortable eating bacon every now and then because you realize that it's all about moderation and about how you use it. If you ate nothing but bacon all the time, yeah, it might be a cancer risk, but having it every now and then isn't a very big issue. Same with titanium dioxide. Don't snort lines of it. Don't set up a large bucket of it in front of a fan and then just sit there and inhale it. Wear a dust mask while you work with it, and really, it's not that big of a deal. It's not a huge risk for our purposes. There's also really not anything that you can use instead of it. You'll see that zinc oxide is really kind of in comparison for all the things that we use titanium dioxide for. So if you're uncomfortable using titanium dioxide, I'm really not sure what to tell you. I would highly recommend that you take a closer look at the study that is behind the cancer risk assessment. The Canadian government has a great sort of overview of what the results of that study actually mean for practical human applications, and I will link that below so you can go check that out. But yeah, titanium dioxide is awesome in our cosmetics, and in the ways that we use it, it is perfectly safe. So I'm basically just going to take a bunch of the powders and some little dishes and kind of like rub them around and tell you what they feel like, and I'll sort of smudge them on my skin so you can see what they look like, and we'll chat about why you would use one and why you might use another, and yeah. So come on, let's get started. These are the five cosmetic powders we're going to be looking at today. As you can see, they're all kind of whitish. So this is sort of the cosmetic powders white stuff edition. So over here we have titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. And I put these off on their own because they are more opacifiers. And over here we have sort of more filler, sheer filler powders. So cornstarch, searsite mica, and kaolin clay. And this is obviously white kaolin, not like pink or anything. Um, so all of these have different impacts on our cosmetics and we include them for different reasons. So I thought we would take a quick look to see what they do. So two white powdery ingredients you will see in cosmetic recipes a ton are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. As you can see, they look fairly familiar. If you look closely, you'll see that zinc oxide does have a larger particle size than titanium dioxide, and they are like a slightly different color, not hugely noticeable. I do find that the titanium dioxide sort of seems to be maybe a like a slightly cooler white than the zinc oxide, but that might just be me. So you will see titanium dioxide in almost everything. And this is because in addition to being an opacifier, it is a fantastic brightening ingredient. We basically use it as our color white in any color blend. So if you combine this with carmine, you get an amazing bright pink. And we use it as a way to create an opaque base for lots and lots of things. We will also often combine it with zinc oxide. Now, loads and loads of people have read that titanium dioxide is a carcinogen. So tons of people ask me if they can use zinc oxide instead of titanium dioxide. No, please don't. Generally, no. Unless uh, you're just using some titanium dioxide in something like a soap recipe just to sort of whiten it up a little bit. Anything that zinc oxide can do in cosmetics, titanium dioxide does better. Um, it's just really not a very good swap. In pretty much any recipe you'll find, if it does include a bit of zinc oxide, it's going to include quite a bit more titanium dioxide. Zinc oxide is generally included for you know a bit of opacity and a bit of brightness, um, 
but titanium dioxide has better brightness, better opacity, better adhesion, better coverage, it, better light scattering. It's, it's literally better at everything than zinc oxide. So we'll include zinc oxide often because it's a good anti-chafing ingredient. So let's take a look at how the two kind of go on the skin here. So they're both very dry feeling powders. You can see that I can actually really pack them down as well. If I give those a little shuffle, you'll see that there's still a little, like a fingerprint of it at the bottom of the, uh, the dish here. So you can see that they're quite opaque, but the titanium dioxide is definitely more opaque. You can definitely see more of my finger color shining through on the zinc oxide finger than the titanium dioxide finger. So if we rub them around, neither of them have great slip. Uh, that's why we usually pair them with something like magnesium stearate. They're both pretty dry and skiddy. Zinc oxide is definitely more dry and more skiddy. And as you see, as I rub my fingers, the zinc oxide comes off much, much, much more easily. Like with the titanium dioxide, it's shearing out, but the zinc oxide is, it's just coming off. And so as I try to sort of push my fingers together, there's quite a lot of skid here. So this is definitely zinc oxide, great for some oil absorption. Not as much here. Like there's definitely a little bit of tack to it, but not as much. So any product that has a ton of zinc oxide in it, will start to feel quite skiddy and unpleasant. And as you can see, the coverage just really, really doesn't compare. So that is why we use predominantly titanium dioxide and zinc oxide sort of tends to play second fiddle, mostly appears only in face powders. Like I wouldn't usually trouble with adding zinc oxide to something like a lipstick where I wanted white, like I would just use titanium dioxide instead. It has better adhesion and you can get it in a oil soluble version that makes it just a lot nicer to work with. So those are our two sort of opacifying white powders. So let's take a look at our fillers. So these are our filler powders, cornstarch, cerocyte mica, and kaolin clay. So cornstarch, you can use cornstarch, arrowroot starch, or wheat starch in cosmetic recipes that call for starch. They're all pretty interchangeable. And starch is the quintessential filler powder. It is light, it is cheap, it is soft, and it is pretty much completely transparent on the skin. So if you have a product where you're finding that maybe the pigment is a little bit too strong, you can dilute it with cornstarch. Cornstarch is the makeup equivalent of watering something down. Uh, I personally, I like cornstarch, but actually I love arrowroot starch as well. So um, really use whichever strikes your fancy. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, like it feels really lovely when you rub it between your fingers and it's just a fantastic filler. Like it makes your products feel really nice and will dilute them down. But other than that, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really improve the appearance of your skin. It doesn't do much for adhesion. Um, you can see it doesn't like really show up on, on the skin at all. So cornstarch, filler. Cerocyte mica. So cerocyte mica is you know, a mined muscovite mica here. Uh, unlike really, really shimmery micas, the colorful ones that you're probably familiar with, uh, you can see that this really doesn't have much gleam to it and it's kind of just a gray color. So my favorite thing about cerocyte mica is its light diffusion properties. So when you include cerocyte mica in something, it helps diffuse the appearance of light. It is quite sheer as you can see, but what it does is it creates, you know, it creates this wonderful sort of light diffusion that makes your skin appear smoother and better. And it's just an optical illusion. And I think that's brilliant. I don't know how well that's coming across on camera, but that is why we include it. If you've ever used any of my airbrushing powder recipes, you will know what I am talking about. This stuff is great. It also improves adhesion and slip. And it is also a great filler. So uh, if you wanted to, for instance, like in a, in a foundation powder, you can kind of water it down with cerocyte mica. And what you lose in coverage, because of course you are diluting, you know, your titanium dioxide base. So what you lose in coverage, you, you gain in that diffusing effect that makes your skin appear even more perfect. So cerocyte mica is awesome stuff. And whenever you see mica on a mineral makeup list, uh, and it's just sort of just says mica, it's usually this. Cause you're probably thinking like, wow, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look really, really shimmery. It's just foundation. Uh, this is the mica that they are usually talking about. And then our last kind of filler powder is Kaolin clay. So I'll, this is, again, this is another great filler. It goes on the skin quite sheer. 
Obviously, uh, the sheerness of all of these is generally impacted by your skin tone, but for the most part, all of these are sheer on most skin tones if you uh, sort of distribute them appropriately. Feels really, really lovely when you rub it between your fingers, really nice and light and silky. Clearly doesn't make your skin look really, really ashy. Helps with adhesion and also helps with oil and moisture control. So if you have oily skin, this can be a great little ingredient in, in anything, <laughs> in any kind of powdered cosmetic. Uh, yeah, and then of course it's it's inexpensive, and yeah, it doesn't really smell like anything, so it it'll help help with adhesion, you know, in a way that cornstarch wouldn't. I added some kale and clay to one of the powder-based recipes in my book, Make It Up. So if you have it, you you know which one I'm talking about, and I included that to help with adhesion because the original recipe felt really really silky, but the powder just kind of fell off your face really really quickly. So a simple addition of some kaolin clay and a touch of titanium dioxide really helped with that. So the inclusion of kaolin clay can help boost your adhesion without you know shifting the color of your product too too much. So I wanted to finish up with some swatches of each of these powders on my skin so you can start to see you know how they look and how they compare to one another. So that's you know roughly roughly equal and then I'm gonna take a brush here and give them a little dusting so we can see kind of what's gonna stick around with you know with a bit of wear I guess you could call it so there you can see the titanium dioxide definitely held on really well zinc oxide not so much cornstarch completely gone cerocyte mica the teensiest little shadow of it and the, the clay actually did reasonably as well reasonably uh, well as well. So you can see why titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are not really interchangeable. And you can see how these three make great fillers and how, you know, sort of in cornstarch, cerocyte, kaolin clay at order, they will impact the opacity and the color of your final product. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that helped get you a little bit better acquainted with five sort of essential cosmetic powders that we use when making makeup and also help settle that sort of can I use zinc oxide instead of titanium dioxide question that I get a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Give me the big old YouTube thumbs up and uh, I will see you next time.